Dutasteride or Finasteride? Which is better? Today we have a detailed point by point comparison coming right up. And at the end of the video, we're going to give you our verdict based on a whole variety of factors. Which one is better? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Welcome to the Hair God YouTube channel. If you are new here, do consider subscribing. So today we'll be comparing finasteride to dutasteride across various domains like their efficacy and the side effects. We're going to give you the winner in each area. And then at the end of the video, we're going to give you our verdict on the overall winner. And guys, just before we kick things off talking about the mechanism of action, if you're watching this video because you're personally worried about your own hair loss, don't forget to click the link in the description to take the hair guard hair loss quiz. You'll answer a few short and simple questions about yourself and your hair loss. Then you'll receive free, personalized, expert advice on how to regrow healthy hair. So first things first guys, let's look at the mechanism of action. So both finasteride and dutasteride block DHT, and they do this in a similar way, by inhibiting the enzyme that converts testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. This enzyme is called 5-alpha reductase. By inhibiting this enzyme, our body is unable to convert the circulating testosterone into DHT and the levels of DHT drop dramatically. So both drugs are so-called 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. That being said, there is a big difference between the two of them. There are two versions of the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. These are simply called type 1 and type 2. They have a slightly different chemical structure, but exactly the same function. They convert testosterone to DHT. Now, finasteride only inhibits the type 2 enzyme, whereas dutasteride inhibits the type 1 and the type 2. Because our body makes DHT from both enzymes, dutasteride results in a near total suppression of DHT levels over 90%. This compares to around a 70% reduction from finasteride. So clearly the winner here is dutasteride, right? Well, actually, no. You see, it's only the DHT made from the type 2 enzyme that causes hair loss. We know this from a rare genetic mutation that makes some people lack a functional type 2 enzyme. These people still have DHT in their system from the type 1 enzyme, but they're immune to hair loss. So even though dutasteride is the most efficient DHT blocker of the two, you judge your medication by its selectiveness and not by its potency. If it's only the type 2 enzyme that causes hair loss, the superior medication is the one that only blocks the type 2 enzyme and not both of them. The more targeted the medication and the less it interferes with other aspects of our biochemistry, the better. So therefore, the winner is finasteride. Two, the next thing we're going to look at is the efficacy. So both drugs are efficient at blocking the progression of hair loss at least for the majority of users. There is so much research at this point that this is beyond doubt. But which of the two is better? With which one are you more likely to regrow hair? Now, guys, I want to be clear. The differences between the two drugs are not actually that large. But dutasteride does appear to have a clear advantage. We had a meta-analysis published just last year which looked at this question. A meta-analysis is like a study of studies. So what you do in a meta-analysis is you take all the individual studies that compared finasteride to dutasteride, you run some statistics on them and you get an overall result. And the result that you get is obviously more reliable compared to the individual studies. And it's because you're dealing with a much larger sample size. And the larger the sample, the more confident that you can be in the results. Makes perfect sense, right? So the meta-analysis looked at three efficacy parameters. The first was objective hair growth counts. The second was photographic assessments by expert doctors of the vertex area. And third, photographic assessments of the frontal scalp. Guys, believe it or not, on all three measures, dutasteride was superior to finasteride. To give you an idea, dutasteride typically gave around 50% more hairs in a small area of the scalp that was one inches in diameter. And in some studies, this difference was even larger. Now, this might sound like a very large difference, but you need to bear in mind these counts are typically taken at the border between the balding and hairy areas of the scalp. These are the parts of the head more likely to see regrowth, and they are not representative of the entire scalp. In parts of the head that have gone completely bald, neither finasteride nor dutasteride will be able to do anything. The other thing is even in these selected areas that are typically measured in studies, the hair counts themselves are not that impressive. We're talking something in the area of 10 to 20% regrowth. But still, the result here is clear, and the winner is dutasteride. The third thing we're going to look at is side effects. Being that the two drugs have very similar modes of action, they also have very similar side effects. 
just like you'd expect. So the most common side effects for both are loss of libido, erectile dysfunction and ejaculation disorders like low production of semen. And guys, these side effects appear with more or less the same frequency, whether you take dutasteride or finasteride. This is what the meta-analysis that we were discussing previously found out. There was no statistically significant differences in side effects. Or we could look at this large study from a few years back that looked at large numbers of dutasteride treated patients and again found the same thing. The side effects were more or less comparable with finasteride. By the way, I should mention that the study was funded by GlaxoSmithKline, which is the maker of dutasteride. So in this table, you can see the frequency of side effects in two groups of men who were treated with either dutasteride or finasteride. The results are almost identical. 7% had impotence on dutasteride, 8% on finasteride. 5% had loss of libido with the dutasteride, 6% with the finasteride. The other side effects were rarer across both groups. So gynecomastia, headaches, dizziness, and fatigue were all around 1% for both drugs. So when it comes to side effects, it's pretty clear that the two drugs are similar. So in this case, we're gonna say dutasteride and finasteride are tied. The fourth thing we're going to look at is price. Now, this is pretty straightforward. A monthly supply of Propecia at the recommended dosage of 1 mg daily in the US is around $110 per month. A monthly supply of Avodart, which is the branded name of Dutasteride, is just over $200. So we're talking almost twice the price for Dutasteride. If we look at the generic versions, the differences are actually even greater. Generic Finasteride starts from around $25 per month compared to $87 for the generic Dutasteride. That's over three times cheaper. Guys, this one isn't even close. The winner is finasteride. The fifth thing we're gonna look at is the availability of the drugs. Well, here's the deal. Both drugs are readily available. You can pick them up at any pharmacy and both are prescription only. But in the US and Europe, dutasteride is only marketed for the treatment of prostate enlargement or benign prostatic hyperlasia as per the scientific name. So you'll need to find a doctor willing to prescribe it off label. Who knows, your personal doctor might be willing to do it for you but they might not, in which case you'll have to shop around, which is not gonna be the case with finasteride. Finasteride is more simple. You lose your hair, you go to the doctor, he then prescribes the finasteride. Simple as that, it's done. Therefore, in this case, the winner would be finasteride. The sixth thing we're gonna look at is the popularity. Again, this one isn't even close. The only two countries in the world where dutasteride is licensed and sold widely for hair loss is South Korea and Japan. In Korea, it actually recently overtook finasteride as the number one treatment, but everywhere else in the world, finasteride is the only licensed prescription medication for hair loss. So the market share for hair loss isn't even close. Therefore, the winner is finasteride. So the overall winner, who is it? Well, guys, we've matched the drugs head on, and in most areas, there was a clear winner, finasteride. When it comes to treating hair loss, dutasteride does have an advantage in terms of regrowth but this is small. The real strength of these drugs is that for most users, they'll halt the progression of hair loss. That's their selling point, not the few hairs that you'll regrow. And for whatever reason, GlaxoSmithKline, the manufacturer of dutasteride, did actually not try to get the drug licensed for male pattern hair loss in the US. And this has led to finasteride taking over the market and becoming the undisputed number one prescription medication for male pattern baldness. So if you're just starting out on your hair loss treatment and you're debating which drug to take from dutasteride and finasteride, finasteride is probably the better option for you. It will be much easier to get a doctor's prescription and it will cost you far less money in the long run. You could have dutasteride as the fallback option if you see that you're not getting results with finasteride. We know from the published research that many men who don't get any results with finasteride often respond positively to dutasteride. And your doctor will probably be much more open to prescribing it after you've given finasteride a try. The other scenario where you can consider dutasteride is that if you've been on finasteride for many years and you've developed resistance to its effects. For many guys, this will happen around the five year mark, at which point their hair loss resumes. Again, consult with your doctor and you can both then decide together if dutasteride is an option worth exploring. Guys, make sure to click the video on the screen right now to learn more about the real truth of male pattern baldness and also you can learn about the eight steps that Will, the founder of Hair God, used to reverse his hair loss.